The Steam Next Fest is a joyous occasion when we gamers get to see the games of tomorrow, today. As a roguelike aficionado, let me show you the roguish games that I filled my time with over the last week or so, starting with... Spell Brigade is billed as a co-op wizard survivor-like for up to four players. I've seen a few gameplay videos around and the main character designs are really memorable. So let's see how it plays. Okay, so it's not an infinite plane. It's not like a, a vampire survivors or a death must die. Okay. Decrease spell cooldown with 20. Actually, we really need this right now. Oh my God, I did 150 damage? Find and close the rifts. Is this game not balanced for single player? Is it only balanced for multiplayer? I'm not gonna be able to kill them fast enough to clear the space, so I have to like run away from them kind of and loop back around to try and do the objective. Okay, now I'm doing more damage. It's got a nice art style. Pretty pretty, right? Don't, doesn't have a dodge. There's no dodge. I have ranged attacks that I, I think I control. No, I don't control. It's an auto shooter. All I'm controlling is movement. I've been pointing the other stick at the enemies this whole time, thinking that I was firing out spells. <laughs> oh man, it's like when you give your little brother the PlayStation controller that's not plugged in. <laughs> so it's got the attack style of Deep Rock Galactic Survive. It really, it really needs some different music. This music is driving me insane. It just loops, and the loop isn't that long. It's like a... It's like a 30 second loop. And it has one drum beat at the end, which is louder than all the other drum beats. <laughs> it's just a little bit distracting. But my spells are getting more powerful. It must be working. Oh, shit. Wait, the Chompers did the same amount of damage as the little bugs. Does just everything do 150? I really like the character designs. Like, I like this moon-shaped guy. He's pretty cool. Ow, ow, everything does 150. Everything does 150. That's weird, why? Oh, rock dudes. Guys, do you, would you like to guess how much damage the the um, crawling rocks do? I think I might know. I would, I would probably put decent money on it being 150. <laughs> Which I don't get, like, the the crawly, the worm guys uh, move at the same speed of these as these little critters. They look more menacing, but they do the same damage. Like, like, what's even the point in having different character models if they don't do anything different? Oh, wait, 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 you're close, you're close. Hit me. Two, 250! 250! We were, we were off. I, I mean, I like the, the moon boomerang and how it hits multiple en enemies. That's kind of cool. I like the character design. I like that there's an enemy that can do more than uh, 150 damage to me at a time. That's pretty cool. Infuse your spell with lightning and infuse, infuse it with fire. Now, does lightning arc off of enemies? Because lightning arcs off of enemies, I think that's best. Let's try. It does arc off of enemies. Okay. Okay. Where was this ages ago? I think the main thing this game could do with is a little bit of balancing for single player. I think that's that would be my biggest critique so far. I just feel like it, this this isn't designed to be played by one person. Okay, so now I've gotten my solar pulse up to level 5. Which means then that level 6 I get to add an elemental effect to it. Which could be interesting. I wonder how they cross over as well. It'd be interesting to see if like, if I can get an effect for the um, spell, which could then like work in tandem with my lightning or something. I don't know, we'll find out. I'm definitely getting stronger. Like these little guys don't really bother us anymore. Like they were like pushing us off of objectives earlier. Okay, so now we have a boss somewhere, do we? Where's the boss? Oh, there he is. Okay, so he's like an octopus. So I guess, I guess this is the, the the sea based roguelike okay quick quick question we're fighting crabs we're fighting like sea creatures that live in shells we're fighting an octopus why are we on grass surrounded by rocks <laughs> i'm noticing a little bit of uh, cognitive dissonance here surely if i'm fighting all these nautical creatures i should be uh, like under the sea 
Whoa! Wait, why are you firing obelisks at me? <laughs> what is this? I'm gonna play as the sun. Bro, this is this is my new emergent gameplay. <laughs> I I walk around in circles around crabs. Watch me edge these crabs. Ho oh, ho baby, look at me go. Oh my days. Oh oh two lots at once. Can't handle me. This is your single player sun gameplay. So the thing is I can't like like roam around them because I do so little damage. I have to stay close so that I can um, damage the ones closest to me and grab their XP. If I start like like getting funky with it, like corralling them, I can't do enough damage. I just have to edge them. Just keep edging. Keep edging the crabs. Keep edging the crabs. Maybe I would like Wedding Witch? Has it got edging in it too? I think you know what I'm gonna say right off the bat. Lack of lethality as a solo player is an issue here. In a survivor like, feeling like a bullet hell badass is half the fun, running away from little critters is like the opposite of that. That said, there are some things I like about Spell Brigade. The character design and world design is whimsical and a nice change of pace from the huge number of pixel art games in the space. The wizards all have a charm about them and the spells look really good too. Could maybe do with a little bit more oomph, but in general, everything visually lands really well. Beyond the balancing side for solo players, I had a couple of thoughts. Musically, something to match the whimsical visuals on a longer loop would do a lot for the game's soundscape. On game design, I had a few thoughts after I put the game down. While no game dev myself, hear me out. Have you ever sat on a beach and watched a wave roll over the sand, and as it retreats back into the sea, the sand comes alive with all sorts of critters? Some of the enemies may be bugs, but the rest are very C-coded. Maybe a literal wave lapping part of the map signaling the next wave of enemies coming onto the screen, connecting the enemies with the map a little bit more, would be quite cool. From the trailer I can see there's another map from the one that I played which looks a little bit more nautical, but I think you could do a lot more with that theme. I only came across two elements on my travels, but if there was interplay between them and more of them in multiplayer, that could be really cool. Like if my wizard was throwing out water spells and had a friend who was doing electric spells, making it more powerful, or one person throwing oil and one person throwing fire, stuff like that. Then you could synergize your spells between you and your friends, or as a solo you'd have a few more options. Overall, as with all of what we're looking at today, these are just demos, but from what I can see, it's got a really nice foundation, ready to be built upon. It just needs a little spice. I look forward to seeing how it plays on release. Wizard of Legend 2 The first Wizard of Legend game would absolutely kick my ass. You play as a wizard with a variety of elemental spells as you fight through the trials of legend in this top-down roguelike. Returning with a new perspective and a new team, let's see how the series has evolved in its sequel. Ah! Madame ah! Your commentator ah! Extraordinaire. How am I getting my ass kicked by a skeleton? I'm just trying to figure out the controls, dude! I'll get fucking double dragoned. Okay, so fireball? I'm not too hot on that animation. Look at him. No transition between the animation at all. Ice power. Double bad dragon. Okay. The spells are really cool. They're, um, these are very similar to spells that you had in the first game. Get frozen. Get flamed. It's interesting that in the first game, everywhere was themed around elements. This game doesn't really seem to have that so far, as far as I can tell. Unless we get to the end of this area and it's like, this is the zombie element. The dead element. Dead element. Whoa, get wrecked. Ow. <laughs> I said get wrecked and he said, no, you. What, what, what is this? You can be legendary wizards, Sarumia, Kelkemethia, or Sharon. Someone drew the short straw on the wizard naming convention. Okay, we'll play Sharon. Okay, this this is giving me feels from the first game because the first game starts off with like a museum exhibition on the trials of legend. Okay, this is this is from the first game. So suck, pound, that works. Hold. 
works. See, that works, man. That works like a dream. Ah. I like this. Ow. We found ourselves a a combination of moves that really work. Oh, we can enhance our attacks. Interesting. If you I'm gonna take the fireball upgrade to begin. Bro, this guy almost killed me in one shot. What the hell? Ow, ow, ow. Ow, ow, ow. My ass absolutely kicked, bro. There's more? Ah. I like the, uh, this death animation is really cool. I like the little, like, it blacks out everything and just leaves you in a little spotlight. Feel sorry for yourself. What is this smelly tree? <laughs> Look at this smelly tree. <laughs> What have they done to you, Smelly Tree? See, the game does... It does want you to get good. Ah! Beautiful. Okay. Just gotta play this safe. I've been playing a little bit too aggressive. There we go. You hit a home run with that one. Look at that lightning spell, it's so cool. Like the delay on it is awesome. Because I keep forgetting to do all the Oh, this is gonna be the boss, right? The boss fights in the first one are really cool. Please don't kick my ass, sir. Ah! Oh shit. Oh, dude, 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 calm, please! Bro, bro, what was, bro, what? Jesus Christ, I got my ass kicked. But wait, you can do it. You're wait, have you seen this guy's eyes? He had a fucking Renegon in one eye and a Sharingan in the other eye. That's fucking copyright infringement game. Oh, oops, uh, no, stop pushing me in. Bruh. Is this chest gonna fucking, oh shit. Oh shit, he does fucking air spells. Dude, d what? <laughs> I got my ass kicked by a chest. Wait, do I have chaos gems? I do have chaos gems, oh my god. Wizard can perform an extra dash on pits. Increase maximum health of wizards, each rank boost by 30? Yes. And and again, and again, just give me, give me fucking life. So far, I'm really digging this. I think this is such an improvement from the first game. If it has as many spells as the first game, I'm like totally happy. Oh, this will be the teleporter back to the shop. Hmm. You don't look like a shopkeeper. Oh, Jesus. Bro, what the hell? Dude, stop. I kept my ass absolutely beat. Oh, he broke his shields. He's winded. I do not have enough dashes for this. Oh, Jesus. Not good. Oh! Whoa! Wizard of Legend 2 doesn't really want to reinvent the wheel, and I kind of appreciate that. I really like the shift to top-down 3D as opposed to the perspective of the original. That was the part of the first game I disliked the most, along with the rare bits of platforming that was in the first game. The combat hasn't changed dramatically, but the progression has taken a huge step forward. It's not an overly ambitious change from the first game, so there's not too much here to discuss. If you liked the first game and wanted more Wizard of Legend, then Wizard of Legend 2 seemingly hits the mark. I'll definitely be playing more on release. I've been aware of Sephiria for a little while now. After I finished my first run on Dungreed, I looked up the developers Team Hooray to see what other games they'd cooked up, 
only to find that Dungreed was their first and only released game at that time. But they did have something called Sephiria in development. I've been working on a Dungreed video, so if you're not familiar with this absolute gem, or just want to see my thoughts on it, let me know in the comments down below. I've been second guessing myself in releasing a video on a 7 year old indie game. But back to Sephiria. While my first impressions from screenshots weren't great, there's been some buzz around this demo, and so I'm expecting good things going in. Let's see how Team Hooray do. Day of Destiny. I'm moving. The Day of the Ritual? Just keep going right, okay. Oh, got a dash. You're the last. Drink the potion and get up there. Roger, roger. Choir potion. Everyone's here. The great tree will determine your fates. Let's begin the ritual. I just want to appreciate for a second the trees. I really like that wind motion. From here on, you will be the villages. What you're about to see is the future, some time from now. The tree is sending me text messages. Everybody's gone. Um, while in a different perspective, it doesn't feel too dissimilar from Dungry, which is funny. Ooh, fancy. I'm smash the boxes. Cost MP, press Y, okay. A less passive block. In, uh, in Dungry, uh, your block is passive. Ooh. Oh. I like the stun. So we do have a... Uh, what do we call it? Parry by looks of it. Oh. Oh. I'm out of mana. Correct. I am the greatest adventurer of all time. Oh. <laughs> Oops. Oh, it is the tree. I tried to stop him, but I wasn't strong enough. Meet such an end as this. You must stop Asgard and his followers. You won't be able to do it on your first attempt, however, because <laughs> this is a roguelike motherfucker. <laughs> oh, this is funny. Enables you to change your destiny. The power of the roguelike. I like when there's story reasons for why you get to keep trying. Sometime after that. Oh, travel east. Oh, Jeb! Hi, JJ! The chief is waiting at the elevator! Stay safe! Thank you, JJ. Abrams, I presume. <gasps> Change miracle? Oh, you go different, uh, characters. Interesting. We'll stick with the basic bunny for now. How do they explain that in story, eh? We can explain in story why you're able to uh, come back from the dead, but we're not going to be able to tell, explain why you can uh, change bodies. 
Oh, uh oh. Oh wait, that's me blocked off. Okay. LB to level up. Cool. Explosion proof vest. Held in a stairway fragment. When entering another floor, gain a buff that increases move speed and attack speed. Sharp flint, critical attack. We have a we have a lot of space in our inventory. Increase perfect guard window by 0 0.03 seconds. That feels like it's taking the piss just a little bit. I'll take this. Uh, wait. Uh, oh. oh, I can revisit a room by pressing and holding. Interesting. Just, okay. Go acquire an artifact. Whoa, I'm glowing. Oh, it's because I just entered a new area. And because of my item, I get... I'm more powerful for a little bit. Let's go. Anyone else? Oh, I didn't have enough... mana to deal with that. It's game sweet. I like this. It's not very complicated now, but if I know Dungree's developer, it's gonna get fucking complicated. In a good way, though. Did you accidentally heal me? Oh no, did I level up? I am to the mini ballista. Oh, that's cool. Ballista helped me. I was just firing endlessly, that's awesome. Ooh, how sweet, that's class. This is really neat. I like this a lot. Um, let's go over here and go south. I don't know how much stuff there is in normal boxes. The levels aren't uh, aren't too big. You're going down quite often. I think we'll take the upgrade. Go ballista, go! I'm not doing a very good job of maintaining my health, if I'm honest. You get loads of upgrades in this one. In Dungreed, you had four trinket slots. We have, like, loads in this one. We want to find our upgrade area. Ooh. Nice. On a successful block, reduce MP consumption, increase attack speed by 15, and block damage from the opposite direction. Right, I'm going to take this just to see. The music isn't too, like... Intense, but it, it's nice. It's a nice little soundscape. I'm quite happy. Oh! Oh, my little shield blocked me. What an absolute chat. Oh no! My uh, blister's dying. Ooh, what's that? Ebony scale, increase critical chance by four for every tablet you have in your inventory. Interesting, that's really good. Oh, my ballista got its uh, health back.
Oh. I died it. No. You're back, I see, but it wasn't a failure. If you don't plan to give up, follow the light below to return to the fated moment before you set out. Destiny Inscription. Collect sapphires. When you die, you acquire sapphires equal to your level. You can use... Oh, interesting. So they're just equal to my level. I don't have to, like, um, find them or anything. Heavy weapon training. Undergo great sword training with Moro. I need one more. Interesting. This game makes me think of Dungreed in the way that... I feel like Dungreed has the art style that it has to maximize how much it can put into the game. This game already, I can already tell, feels quite big, and it didn't want to be limited by pixels, fidelity, graphics, all that jazz. It feels like it's gameplay led, and then pixel art just makes that whole process easier than trying to be a triple A level graphics wise. If that makes sense. So you can play this multiplayer as well, that's cool. I'm doing far more dodging than I am blocking, but I just feel more confident in the dodge. Oh, nice. Hello. We will take the ebony scale. Oh, I knocked it down the hole. Oh, that's really cool. Oh, he comes back, just like me. That's funny. Is this a Dr. Mall? I wish they got affected by their own explosives, that'd be funny. Yeah, the uh, Team Hooray who make Dungree to make this game. They've definitely brought across things that worked well in Dungree. And it's cool, they have this kind of like quality of life led design at times, and I can feel it here. Ooh, 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 blister, blister, blister. I want a blister back. Yo, blister, get off the fucking trap, bro. <laughs> Why are you hanging out there? I feel like that's not the place to be. You're the one the master has been talking about. Wait, am I in Buffy the Vampire Slayer now? I can do the... No, don't, don't hurt my friend. Oh. Oh, he drops bombs while he's in drill mode. I like the little, um, like, debris that comes down from the ceiling to hint at where enemies are coming in. Have you got a second phase? Dude. You're dead. You have no health. <laughs> you should die. Oh no, they're hitting my turret! Skin is absolute ass kick. Oh! Oh! Interesting. You see how the when the lines come together, that sign signifies when the attack is coming. How did I not realize that fully until now? You guess he's a good boss to make you figure that out. Stop. Oh wait, I've got explosive armor. Haha! <laughs> Go. Try blocking this. No, I can't block. I have no, I have no mana. Oh. Oh, dude. Interesting. These only increase artifact levels. So you kind of want to have it on its own on a row. You can now change artifact levels using stone tablets. All damage increased by plus 10. Okay, I'm I'm 100% taking that. <laughs> and I might put it in this slot immediately. All damage increased 25%. Let's go. This game blew me away. Team Hooray, just get it. They've taken a lot of the things that worked well in Dungreed, like the quality of life teleport options to make backtracking easier, or the simple art direction opening up so many gameplay possibilities. They casually solved the biggest issue I had with Rogue Prince's boon system with their tablet system here in Sephiria. 
Dungreed gave you so many playstyle options with just two weapons and four trinket slots. Sephiria has huge potential for player expression and run variety with its larger inventory and tablet systems. That's a lot of room for upgrades, and if I know these guys, you're going to need every last slot late into the game. I have absolutely no notes. My only criticism is it isn't out right now. Another co-op roguelike, but this time it's a more traditional action roguelike rather than a survivalite. It seems to embrace English folklore, and as a British bruv, this appeals to me. Let's see how it handles Camelot, the Knights of the Round Table, and all that jazz. Quick aside, I do suffer from occasional migraine flare-ups, and in this footage and in the next two, I'm not as chatty or as articulate as I've been in the other footage, or I'll be in the footage afterwards, or in these sections just here. Bear with me, I'll express myself far better in the fourth section of those three bits. Thanks for the understanding. Sworn and the Goblet of Skulls. Oh, we're already into the game. I thought there was going to be a little bit more... Oh, look at those spins! I'm not a fan of when you can do that in games. It just feels derpy. Rewards a fey blessing. Oh wait, is this like Hades? I pick a different door and I get a different rewards? Oh Jesus. Your light attack is stronger and it flicks. Oh look, it's the dude. Uh, it flicks stagger. Your heavy attack is stronger and it flicks stagger. Your dash emits a quake. Yeah, it's very Hades. Interesting. It's like Hades with the aesthetic of Darkest Dungeon. And these are trap pads, aren't they? Yeah, of course they are. So this is a multiplayer Hades game. Interesting. I'm playing it solo, of course, because I didn't learn from last stream. Okay, that bar under their health bar is like a stagger meter. There's like green stuff where well, they died. I wondered if they were dropping health. Ah! Wait, did I? <laughs> I died. <laughs> uh, okay, I, 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 I know what I'm doing more now. It's okay, game. Oh, I got, I got 10 out of 5? Holy. Plus one health at the beginning of every room. Oh my days. This is very Hades. I'll add some max health. Thank you. It doesn't make the spawning in sounds from Hades, but I can almost hear them. <laughs> I can almost hear them when they're spawning in. Another trap. Their wind up to attack animation is like, doesn't leave you much time to react. At least I'm, that's what I'm finding. Rewards a sword in the stone, contains an elite enemy, let's do it. It's the almighty boar. Ow. Correct, almighty boar. Blade wave. The first two swings of your light attack fires a combo fire. Heavy attack deals plus foot damage or pulls enemy towards you. Plus 10 damage. So, swords in the stone are your Daedalic hammers from Hades. That's pretty powerful. This is clearly a, um, a melee first game, so the ability to have any range, I think, is just, like, gonna be busted. I, I think I have to play this multiplayer, because I, I need to understand if the multiplayer element would add enough 
to make this game worth it. You know what I mean? But there's Rook. So there's multiple characters, which is interesting. Do you think it's going to up the difficulty because I've selected multiplayer? Oops. <laughs> Okay, so it's got the extra reward rooms from Hades as well. <laughs> oh, man. I wonder how much they'll do with this being a sort of, um, you know, British medieval folklore game. Like, we've got Merlin. We seem to have King Arthur, maybe. Damn, they got absolutely destroyed. I like I wonder if the bosses will be like, I don't know, the knights of the round table. They're corrupted. Because everything's corrupted. Classic video game trope. Let's level up our bunny. No, actually let's make our attack strong. Scales. Contains a shop. No enemies are present. How much money do I have? A hundred bucks. wonder how far a hundred bucks will take me in medieval England. Oh. Fucking nowhere. <laughs> oh, this will be a boss. Okay, this, this will be interesting. This will be interesting. What does the boss design look like? Oh, scorpion lizard. Oh, shit. Almost. Go on. Fucking kill it. Oh, <gasps> shit. One health. Yeah, one health and a dream, baby. What, well, he deserved it, Neo. <laughs> I thought I was out of his bubble. Oh, okay. Okay. Okay, that's enough Swarm for one day. Whoa. So, Swarm is definitely the co-op game that said to Hades, Can I copy your homework? And then proceeded to not really change anything. Imitation is the greatest form of flattery, I suppose. It was during Sworn I realised that maybe I need to come back to Sworn and Spell Brigade in multiplayer, as I'm essentially asking them to come down to my level rather than meeting them at theirs. But between the boons, the set slot for boons, the reward rooms, the extra trials within rooms, different boss drops shown on the doors, floor traps, wall traps, an NPC that shows you all the boons that you've had from each of the gods, this game is very Hades inspired. Not that that's a bad thing, some of my favourite games are bastard children of two games, but here it didn't seem to add much to the formula beyond multiplayer. There were weapon upgrades, which is slightly different. Maybe it's really fun in multiplayer, at least it was probably balanced for single player. But yeah, I wasn't feeling it. I think games which take heavy inspiration from another franchise have to answer one simple question. How do we differentiate ourselves from other games? What makes our game unique? I didn't find the answer to that question in my time with the game. Maybe it's further along and I just didn't reach it, but yeah. Answers on a postcard, Swan. Next. Sulphur is a first-person shooter dungeon crawler roguelike. I think I got that right. It has a really interesting, clean, old-school art style. This look is what really sucked me into the game and got me curious. But I hadn't seen much more about the game other than its look. Let's see what I discovered about this unusual genre blend. You have failed. Oh! Done. 
right bumper is jump. The hell? Katana. <laughs> and I have a charged attack. Okay. Swing. Wait, what's this? It's a. <laughs> It's a highly detailed bucket. Yes. Oh, look at that. That's brutal. Slice his face open. <gasps> what the hell? Ah. Oh my god! That was grisly! Bro! Sneaker? Yes! I have one shoe! Oh, I wonder. Yes! I'm in! Oh, money! Oh! Diving fit! Wait! Swim speed. Nice. I have a converse on one foot, a, uh, a diving fin on another foot. <laughs> Absolutely eviscerated. Uh oh. Ah! Dude! Where did you come from? Oh, what did you drop? Corpse Maker. Can that use the ammo for that I have? It can. <gasps> Get wrecked. Oh. Bro. What the fuck are you? Uh-oh. Ow. Always have to reload. It's a really good gun. Wait. Did he die? <gasps> he died! Did you drop something back here into the wall? I hope not. We are not looking very good. <gasps> Food. Give me, give me food, give me food. Got all our little shells everywhere. A throwing knife. Oh, get absolutely minced. Nice, it ranked up. Can I put oil on it now? Yes. So now our gun has increased critical damage, which is beautiful. <gasps> Thank God. I'm filled to the brim and could take us home if you please. Let's go. In most action roguelikes, the upgrades are applied to your character directly. Sulfur is far more focused on weapon upgrades. Use a weapon enough and it will gain a level. And be ready to have a buff applied. Die and you'll lose this buff, I think? The amulet letting me teleport away reduced my usual roguelike body count by quite a bit. On top of weapons, you can find armor and food and other items. Weapons degrade over time the more you use them. 
which I actually like here is that I could foresee it forcing you to switch weapons and not just stick to the same two guns that hoover up all of your upgrades. The visuals are really nice, I enjoyed them even more in motion than I did from the outside looking in. I really like their simplicity and then the absolute brutality when you hit a goblin with a shotgun point blank in the face. The brutality really adds to the sense of power and progression. It kind of, now hear me out, it's gonna sound a bit mad, it kind of gave me a John Wick feel. Because you have guns, your enemies can feel a little bit ineffective against you and your weapons. I felt like I was gunning my way through the catacombs in John Wick 2. Later in my time in the game, I did hit a boss fight and some new enemies which pushed me a lot more. Overall, I really hope all the games I've played so far don't come out at the same time as I won't know where to start. I didn't think I'd be this high on sulfur, but here we are. I think it's the cartoon gore, it just does it for me. Okay, so technically this isn't a roguelike, but hear me out. It has top-down combat, if you die you go back to the start, and when I first saw it it was at the Triple I initiative stream, which was like 80% roguelikes. If it looks like a duck, and it sounds like a duck, it might just be a roguelike. Let's check it out. Kill Knight can be a demanding game. Before you dive into the Abyssal Keep, it is recommended you play for the tutorials. Okay, fine. I presume... Okay, so we have iframes with R dash. Ow. Press R trigger at the perfect time to pistol trigger. What does that mean? Oh, okay. It's like the Gears of War loading thing. Press X to attack with sword. When the sword charges are full, press... Have. Neat. Very neat. Oh, the sky is falling. What is going on here? What, what is this? Am I. Does this do damage? Does my laser beam do damage, or am I just like wasting my. I'm dead. Bro, there's like so little space in this game. What the fuck is this? Also, uh, why is my dash LB? It feels like A has no purpose. What is this? Oh, I meant to hold down one button and press another. Oh, and that gives me health. Interesting. Oh, shit. Feels like it should be A. And I'll play with a mouse and keyboard, probably. Ow. But I feel like mouse and keyboard might be worse. Oh wait, I need to press. Oh! I did not mean to do that. That was bad. I'm dead. <laughs> so this isn't really like your typical roguelike. It's really a... It's an arcade roguelike style game. It's interesting. It's really interesting to see how much depth it has. It's got smart mechanics where, you know, if you if you want to do something specific, ow, you're going to need to earn it. Which I like as a concept. Ow. Oh yeah, shit, I have some sort of special melee move that I just can't remember how to use. Oh shit. Oh my god. Oh. I do not remember how to do the melee move. Oh. Oh. 
Oh, when I hear a room, that's my um, kill thing leaving me. It really just comes down to like two moves, if I'm honest. You want to hit them with your sword so you can get your uh, shotgun rounds back out, and you don't want to get hit by a boss. <laughs> I'm going to cut it a little bit short because, as previously mentioned, I was suffering during these gameplay sessions, but yeah, this isn't really my sort of game. I do like an occasional arcadey experience, but when it's a game like this, I kind of want a little bit more of a journey, I guess, and I guess I was just wanting it to be a roguelike. So that's on me. That's my bad. The twitchy inputs and fast combat, a little bit too fast for me. Um, I'm all about angles and spacing, that's the kind of guy I am. Kill Knight has a real claustrophobic feel. It's really tight, it's really set. I like my games with a little bit more space, a little bit more room to maneuver. Um, but if you're into like fast-paced arcade top-down shooters and you have that brain capacity and those fast thumbs and the cocaine required to fully appreciate this game, more power to you, it's just not my jam. Let's move on to something that's definitely within my wheelhouse. Mech? Roguelike. Where the upgrades you acquire across the run are mech parts. That sounds delicious. I was pretty sold on the concept immediately and jumped right in. Shout out to that guy Key, hope I'm pronounced that right, on the Roguelite subreddit for the recommendation. I wouldn't have stumbled upon this otherwise. So let's get right into it. Okay, so we have all of our bits. And a gun. And a fist. Oh, I can put stuff there? Interesting. I don't have the money. Oh, I want the stick. <laughs> I want a big stick. Can I, wait, can I take a loan out? <laughs> uh, cool. Give me a give me a ten credit loan, and then let's go to the musicians vendor and buy a club. Yes. So, right click is club. Left click will be shoot. B is control tab is inventory. What are you guys? I hit you? Don't think I can. Bonk. 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 Oh my days, I'm fucking ambushed. This is interesting. Is that the sound of a tree falling over? <laughs> it sounds like I stepped on a goat. You just wait over there for a second. Oh. Okay, we got torso. Got some repair. Okay, let's leave. Hey, we made it out. Oh, we get to pick something. Handheld firearm. Legs? We might take legs. Oh, we got new legs, right? Are these better? Well, these are damaged anyway. I guess it'd be beneficial. No available parts, no available parts. Wait, transfer parts, turtle. Oh, we can replace the... Yes, bulky arm. Um... Everything costs time as well, that's interesting. You can't just immediately get stuff, you can't just immediately change stuff. You actually have to... You have to use your time currency. Oh, hello. I don't know the difference between any of these. It's got more... Has it got more attached points? Interesting. This is really cool. Oh yeah. Fucking shiny. Um, and then this... Go to the factory and bomb place. This is really neat. 
I really like this concept. <laughs> this is a tree sound. It gives me a heart attack every time. God damn. Shoulder cannon. Yes. Ah. <gasps> Dodged. What does attack style do? Oh, interesting. Bonk. <laughs> I think I'll go with the bonk over the swing. Okay, so we have a, a right shoulder port. <laughs> that looks so derpy. What does this do? Don't have any available parts for that. Arm. Oh, damn it. What? That looks cool. Oh, it still punches. Wait, how does it fire then? I can't deal with this tree sound of it. Timber. One put. Oh yeah, do we get legs as well? Yes. Oh whoa. Junky. Oh, is that in place of this? Can I put it on this side? I can't put it on this side. Oh hell yeah. So now we hold right. Nice. And that's a rush. Ooh. What is going on with these legs? Oh, they're like... Oh, I've got <laughs> rollerblades. <laughs> How weird. Oh, I have some to kill over there. Let's go. Rollerblades away. So I can just press my attack button and I'll, um, I can fire a few individual shots. If I hold it down, I start firing two at a time. That's good. Farm boy legs. Speed boost, lightweight, T3 legs. Oh, I'm so tall. <laughs> Look how pretty I am. Oh my god. This is making my PC, like, go crazy. I'm gonna tell you right now, my only complaint about this game, I don't think it's very well optimized. I missed every single one of those rockets. How? So I have to kill everyone on the map and defeat that dude. Gotcha. Wait, is that a broken... That was a broken down mech. I got baited in. Okay. Let's go Ace Panther. Is he like a... Melee only? I feel sorry for him. I'm super fast. What are you going to do? Oh, I've taken out one of his arms. I've taken out both of his arms. I've taken him out. <gasps> he dropped something red. Maybe his torso? Quick claw. What? No, guys, we can't keep dropping people in. Loads of health. Cool. Yeah, I'm worried that I'm gonna run out of ammo. Oh god. I'm gonna 
use a weapon soon, I think. Aggroed way too many for this fight. Oh, I died! No! So my only real criticisms you heard while I was playing it there. The game made my PC sound like it was going to take off at some point, so maybe there's a few optimization issues that need to be ironed out. No biggie. Some of the sound design does need a little bit tweaked as well. My little rocket boot sounded like a cannon blast every time I boosted, which was cool the first time, but then less cool with every subsequent thrust. I know that part of this was because of the threat level and me not fully understanding that mechanic at the time, but it did feel a little bit scummy to have 32 mechs to kill on the map and then them to drop reinforcements on me with myself running out of ammo. That, 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 that was bullying. That was, that was bullying. But overall, this game felt really good. The sense of scale was there. Sometimes mech games have this issue where they don't really convey that you're a towering robot dude. It just feels like a normal action game with a little bit of extra set dressing. But that wasn't an issue here. And the map design gave me some real Ghost in the Shell vibes, which is just bonus points for me. I really enjoyed the upgrades being the mech parts that you've got along the way and the huge level of customization, both the, the actual parts that you're using, color schemes, just you could really express yourself through your mech. I really like the concept of the time elements. You only have 15 hours before you have to get back out there. Spend that time wisely, upgrading your mech, buying new parts, laying down low to reduce your fret level. This really grounded these areas between the zones instead of them existing in this sort of bubble outside of time and space. A lot of fun and really well balanced between complex and simplicity. A lot of mech games end up on that complexity end of the scale. Armored Core became an absolute blur of numbers for me, and so I appreciated this really tightly focused experience. I'm looking forward to seeing it on launch. And so there you have it, the games I played during Steam Next Fest. But what did you play during Steam Next Fest? Let me know in the comments down below. And what did you think of this style of video? Would you like to see me do more multi-game roguelike videos? Let me know, as now is your chance to shape the direction of my wee slice of the internet here. While you're here, hit the like, the subscribe, send this video to your least favorite sibling, and give tribute to Baphomet. And I'll see you next time. Bye!